Welcome back to another video everyone. I'm just recovering, kind of recovering from that this squat session that you're about to see. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I think I placed my belt too high. I don't really know what it was, but it was kind of hurting the entire session on squats. And I am not making excuses. If you follow me on Instagram, all those posts, like, I can't believe I have to say this, but 2020, this is just, this is the year, like, this is really, really the year that we have to explain everything we say. Because if you say something, it's a joke, and people take it serious, they think you're stupid, or they think you meant it. But I feel like it's it's kind of sad that I have to explain this, that people really thought I was being serious on my Instagram posts. All those excuses I make for not doing good, it's a joke. Like, I'm not making any excuses, and I'm usually doing good. It's like saying, I didn't do good today because I didn't sleep. I slept with one sock, with one sock and I usually sleep with two. That's me saying I did good, no excuses. And even if I did bad, no excuses. And that was exactly what yesterday's squat session was. I know for a fact today's September 24th. And this is September 22nd, 23rd-ish footage because it was Tuesday. But it was like so late and I had to wait so long just to start squatting that it went like, you know, from like 9 a.m., 9 p.m. all the way to like 1 a.m. It took forever because I was waiting and it was packed. So this is that squat footage of where my my lower back was hurting me on my left side, my left lumbar. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was just that tingly feeling and it just didn't feel good. It didn't really hurt, but it was uncomfortable. I worked up to a 402 single and that just, it felt, that, it was weird because 385 was so heavy and that one I kind of felt in my back and I really felt it in my hips. I felt it everywhere. It just felt like a weight I've never done. That was my opener on my last meet. So like I knew it was something I could do. It was just... It was hard. So I worked up to 402 and I was worried about it. That's why I had two side spotters and someone in the back because I was, I asked them because I was worried about my lower back. So I just wasn't confident. I knew I was going to get it for a fact because that's just how I am when it comes to squats. I don't lack the confidence, but my back was hurting. So just in case my body gave out on me, you know, the spotter arms, I think they were high enough. I mean, I hope they were high enough. They looked like they were to me because I was looking at my warm ups and they seemed like I didn't have to move them. I didn't want to move them just in case they would hit. I didn't want to make it a pin squat. Um, you know, that one, the pain, there was no pain on my 402, thank God. I was really cold on, on, you know, bench. I warmed up my shoulders and everything. But by the time I actually started, my camera had, like, no memory left, so I deleted some stuff. But I only got 10 seconds of my top double. I wanted to do a triple at 243, but it didn't happen. And I've done that before, but it was really hard for me. And I did two. There's no footage of it. I did two, and I just felt like that was way too hard, so I just stopped there. You know, kind of messed up by doing 251 last week. But considering, you know, I was still able to do it, almost get three, considering, like, I wasn't even planning on going to gym, I didn't even feel good. And then I did 234.5 for a three by four. I did two sets of four, and then I lowered the weight because it was way too heavy. Uh, no, two sets of three, sorry. Two sets of three. It was supposed to be a three by four, and I was like, I'm just going to do a four by three, but it was really hard. So I lowered it to 226, four and four. So two sets of three with 234.5, and then two sets of four with 226. I really went based off a of feel because I didn't want to like do less reps because I feel like any reps would have been they wouldn't have been quality reps it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been like smooth even if I lowered it to two reps with 234.5 so that's just how it was I didn't do the accessories I did you'll see at the end is um, pull-ups and dips and the cool thing about pull-ups and dips like I mentioned that I was gonna start doing just like no more body weight it's all weight just like i mentioned these are calisthenic movements uh pull-ups and dips just like squats squats are calisthenic movements and technically deadlift too you can say bench but let's ignore bench because you kind of need weight for that one but deadlifts you can just touch your toes and that's pretty much a deadlift no matter how you do it whether it's a stiff leg deadlift or like you know touch your toes with no bent knees or bent knees you know picking up a box like not a box but something that doesn't weigh like tying your shoes something you can deadlift with no weight. You could do it. Very few do it, but it's possible. For sure, you could do squats. Squats with no weight, you see it all the time on Instagram and YouTube. That's a calisthenic movement. Technically, deadlifts are too, but for sure, pull-ups and dips are. So squats, we don't treat it like calisthenic movements because we put weight on it all the time. Like, very few powerlifters and bodybuilders do, like, you know, air squats. And maybe bodybuilders more, but even then, I think it's rare. But for sure, powerlifters, you're not going to see them doing that other than warming up with air squats. So, I'm treating pull-ups and dips like... I'm treating them like compound lifts now. Like I'm just doing weights, and I was doing 15 pounds on pull-ups, and I was I worked up to I think three by seven or four by five, and that was I think four, five by four or four by five, and that had gotten pretty easy. So I was gonna go to 20 pounds, but I, I just got ballsy and went to 25 pounds on pull-ups, and then I raised it by 10 pounds, and then dips. 
I was at 25 pounds and now I'm at 35. But I know I got dips because I've done 45 pounds on dips for three sets of 10. So it's no big deal. I've been a plate. So it was a super set of uh, pull-ups, three by five. So it was a five by four, four by five with 15 pounds. But with 25 pounds, we did three by five. I just made sure to make it easy. And even then, it was kind of hard. I only recorded the first set. And then dips, pretty damn easy. Three by five with 35 pounds. You know, I'm really, I'm really just doing... Um, linear progression, progressive overload, as easy as possible. So one day, all that easy stuff and those tiny improvements, inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter, will be huge improvements by the time, you know, by January, let's just say. January is not that far away. But for sure by next year come this time. I've always wanted to go for me was always to um, be able to do a plate on pull-ups, three sets of 10. So three sets of 10 with the plate hanging on me on for pull-ups. Maybe even kettlebells, because I feel like that's harder, in my opinion. They hang down lower. Well, I guess that could be easier, but they're more compact. You know, they weigh the same, but they're more compact. It's very similar to a dumbbell. And it's hard to get a dumbbell on the chain when you're doing that. So maybe two two kettlebells, that'd be 40 pounds. And then just like a five pound plate, something like that. And then dips. You know, I've never had a goal on dips, because I never wanted to tear anything. I mean, I guess it's possible to have a goal, but I wouldn't want to go too heavy on dips. That's just something I wouldn't want to do. Um, probably the, the, the most, like a five by five or... That's the most I'd want to do, honestly. And weight-wise, I'm not sure. I've done 3x10 with a plate, and I've done it a lot of times, and it was always hard. But I was able to do it, and I was lighter, of course. But I don't really have a goal. I guess 185. I've done 185 with a slingshot. And I think I did, like, 3x8, but it's a slingshot, so it's not nothing to be proud of. So I guess 185. We could do it. Well, not 185. A plate and a 25. I don't know. Maybe 3x10. That's just some kind of goal. I don't really care about dips that much. I kind of look at that more as, like, hypertrophy. But it is, you know, I'm adding weight and it is becoming like a compound movement. So other than the fact that, you know, I was, this is probably the worst training day I've had, honestly. Like, my entire 2020 and my entire probably, I had, I said I had another one, but I think this one tops it. Or, no, I had another one, really had another one. It was like, man, I was supposed to do three second hold on bench with 215. And this is for my last meet. This was like, ee, like July, late, late July. And... I couldn't even do I did one set of 3 by 6 like I was supposed to, and it was RP like 9. And then the next day, I couldn't even pause it for like 3 seconds on one rep. So I just did like touch and go, and that was hard. Because I was up like 20 hours, I ate one meal and some hot Cheetos, and I didn't really drink anything. So I thought the pure was going to work, and I come to the conclusion, when I'm tired, caffeine does nothing for me. Like I'm, it, it might hit me, but it's not going to do anything. I'm just going to feel it, and then it's gone. And I was up for 20 hours that day. And then this was for sure the this was for sure the worst day because I ate enough I ate before I left the house and I slept I woke up right before the gym I took a pre workout it hit me I waited long it was just the worst training session that's it there's no excuses I still did everything I was supposed to do except for bench sadly I didn't yeah, bench didn't go the way it should have but considering everything that happened I think it wasn't so bad it was just a bad day and when these bad days happen you can't let you can't let them like any setbacks like this get you discouraged. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of powerlifters get discouraged when they can't hit a total and they just quit. And that's seriously like, I mean, I know I can't say like I'm in that their shoes and I understand them because I don't, but like I've never been in that situation. But I'm not saying that might not, that won't be me one day. That might be me. I'd be discouraged and I hit a total and then, I don't know, you never know, I might quit too. But I just think it's crazy how people have to do that. I don't see myself quitting, but you never know. That's why I'm saying it might happen to me because never say never. You might criticize someone judge someone and say all these things then when it happens to you you have more excuses than them so that's why i never say never the only time i say never they say never say never but i say never like for facts i can say never for the past that i can say for the future no like i will never quit powerlifting that i can't say i will never do bodybuilding i will never gain 500 i will never weigh 300 pounds i'll never do this never, that i can't say but for the past i can say it like i can say I've never been to Germany because I've never been there. So you can say never for the past, but not for the future. Like, don't do that. Don't be that guy saying I'm never going to do anything. No, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. Like, you're going to, it could happen. You never know. Once it happens, you always have a bunch of excuses. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for the rest of the week.